All right, bro. IDA. We're going to get started with Greg Moore with the Arizona Republic. Yeah, what's up, man? Greg Moore, Arizona Republic. All right, I don't know what's better, man, the game or the shirt. Dude, that's, that's oh, tough. Man. The shirt. <laughs> shirt is way better. A um, little motivation, you know, to come in. Um, my boy got all banged up, so, you know, just send a little message. Hey, man, what did you learn uh, about yourself and your teammates during that cold stretch in the fourth quarter? I guess it was 71 that you guys were stuck on for a while. You know, winning a tough game. What did you learn about yourself and your teammates? Um, I start off with my teammates. Uh, we're really relentless. Um, you know, uh, we have a thing on the team where something called togetherness, and you know, we play as a unit. We come together, and we just you know fight over adversity and fight over fatigue. Our mental stamina was there today, and we did a good job of that. And me, I learned. I don't know. I could keep going. You know, there's another level. I learned that I. You know, I think I. I reached the next level that I really need to be, you know, be at, at this, at this level when it comes to competing. Next up is Kellen Olsen with the Arizona Sports and then Rachel Nichols. Hey, DeAndre, I know how much you love watching film. So with like a playoff series where you kind of dissect things along the way, how much are you enjoying that process of just watching things evolve and making your own adjustments individually like that? I mean, I like it because you can, you know, um, we see what teams like to do and they see what we like to do. So, I mean, just seeing how, you know, they come up with different coverages to encounter our, our plays and stuff like that, it, it's really lit. Um, I'll say with me, uh, you know, just knowing teams' tendencies, knowing their bread and butter, and, you know, just stopping it. I won't say cheat to play, but, you know, just predicting it and, you know, just having a sense of urgency, you know. Next up is Rachel Nichols with ESPN, followed by Dwayne Rankin. All right, now that you've got so much playoff experience, what do you know about closeout games? It's important. Every possession counts. I mean, really from the, the jump ball, but, you know, when it comes down to like, comes down to that and fatigue is kicking in, everything counts. And, you know, um, the whistle might not go your way. 50 balls is very, really, really precious. And, you know, just having that mental stamina again, just really having that mindset that it's not going to go your way and you have to play, do it. Calls aren't going to be called and, you know, making free throws at the end, I really give my props up to see because he he really got some ice in his veins. You know what I'm saying? You know, he knocked it down and carried his own. With with that sort of that ability to, even if things don't go your way, to keep fighting, is there something in your personal past playing on the court, anything in life that kind of taught you to learn how to do that? Because some people can't do that. Me, me, this is basketball. Um, I went through t tougher things than this through life. You know what I'm saying? So just, you know, overcoming fatigue, a little adversity. I mean, I'm blessed. You know what I'm saying? And to have a team to really have, keep my head together and I got their back and they got mine and the coaching staff where, you know, they, they, their sense of urgency was, was, you know, I, I really liked it today and they really locked in on, you know, just, making sure they alert and know what, what was coming. As you can see at the end of the game, there was a lot of subs. I ain't never been through none of that, but I understand what they were trying to do. And, you know, I really enjoyed all of that. Are we going to get both with the shirt with your face? Hopefully, hopefully. This is Rankin with the Arizona Republic, followed by Gina Mizell. You know, DeAndre, you set a career high for rebounds, 22. And nine on the offensive end. Chris said before, that shoot around and you were like, I got the pay. Mm -hmm. How much was this personal for you to, to be that way on the glass? I'm gonna be honest, I got all played last game. Um, you know, Zuba did a great job of controlling the glass and being a presence down on both ends of the floor. And you know, it was up to me to you know just get in front of that or compete with that or challenge that. And you know, I just tried my best. That's about it. I just really tried my best to just be relentless on the glass and really tried to control both ends of the floor with my presence, talking, just with my effort, second effort. At one point, you guys were just, neither team can make a shot. Like you had tip ends, but usually you drop them, and those aren't going. At what point were you like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, I was like, this is, this is finals basketball right here. This is really what it is. <laughs> like, it's a good shot, but your legs ain't there. You look good, but it ain't, you know what I'm saying? And you just got to stick with it. You know, keep doing what you do and don't really react on things like that. And as a young team, we got some vets on this team to, you know, to really buckle up and 
they they know this was going to happen. And, you know, you just got to keep pushing and keep, you know, chipping down. Next is Gina Mizell with sons.com, followed by Dave McMiniman. Bonnie and a couple of your teammates have mentioned that they've seen your level of focus just go to a complete, a whole new level um, during the playoffs. How did you go about doing that? Is did someone help you get there? Was it just you in your own head? Just like what what has allowed you to get to that intense level of focus that's been required? Honestly, um, the world having me as a question mark in the playoffs, you know, that got to me a little bit, you know, and I wanted to change that. That's about it. Just a question question mark on me. You know, and I just wanted to change that and prove everyone wrong. What does that require every day? Consistency, simple point blank period. Consistency. Um, just approaching the game the right way to start off, and you know, just doing the right things, doing getting ready for the next game, and you know, making sure you prepare, watch your film heavily, know what teams are going to throw at us. Um, you know, asking coaches questions. You know, telling them what I see as well. And just, you know, make me sure I'm comfortable going into the game. This is Dave McMiniman with ESPN, followed by Melissa Rowland. Oh, I love CP, man. Um, I, like I said, that's the that's really the only teammate that really pushed me, like big bro type push, knowing what I got and that I never thought that I had. I think is he was the best thing that happened to my career. You know, I can say that every day. Um, you know, just C is really a dude who pays attention to detail. Um, it's not how he said; it's what he said. You know, I think it was most people don't get. You know, it's just it's just a message for real. And he cares so much. It's, it's actually great. I never know a guy that, you know, cares so much about basketball and compete at everything. And, you know, it's contagious. And, you know, that's what it built in me as well. And, you know, just having him as a teammate and the experience that he's went through and teaching me the little things has is, is helped me, man. And, and it is working. So, you know what I'm saying? Just you know, when you feel like you can take that back, you can bring another one. I'm going to try my best. I'm gonna try my best. Uh, I know, I know how it is as an older player, and you know, being in the league and stuff like this. And when you have an opportunity like this, you can't take it for granted. And he let us know. He let us know, and we know the task at hand. Final two questions are Melissa Rowland with Fox Sports and Ramona Shelburne. Hey, DA. Um, you just alluded to it. Chris talked about it earlier, talking about how at the end of the season you guys had some very heated conversations. You know talked about just like the deep amount of like love and respect that he has for you. How did you receive those conversations at the beginning? How's your relationship? How did it evolve into like this mad respect you guys have for you? I said started a training camp. Um first thing he told me was, you know, the thing that's gonna keep me in the league for a long time is angles. You know, and I was like angles. I was like I do everything angles, you know, and you know it's just angles of the screen. You know, angles to get a rebound, be, be in position for offensive board and, you know, just stuff like today, you know, just using what he said and, you know, him just always keeping that in my head of reps and reps and me being in the pick and roll with him, you know, it's just, I want to say it's easy, but, you know, um, he make it easy to where either he's open or I'm open, man. you know, old board or any, we're going to get something out of it. That's what I've been learning through reps with him. On a question is Ramona Shelburne with ESPN. Okay. Um, Hey, so I, I need a little more of the story on the shirt. Like, who made it for you? Uh, Where'd you get it? And also, like, well, that's a fashionable guy, right? So, like, do you think the bloody nose is good for his rap? Like, I like it. I like it. Now people know Book is tough. Like, you know, they know he was a scorer, but they he's legit. Toughness is like, that's deep book, man. A little crazy, but toughness is him. You know, um, but, you know, it was, the shirt was made by Brand C. You know, one of my friends made it for me. And, you know, just to really show that, you know, we here. We're going to take a uh, punch in the face, but we will throw one back. Thanks for the time, DA. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Thank you. Thank you.